So in this video, you're going to learn about attributes of quadratic functions from a graph. So here are some examples. A quadratic function can be written in standard form. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You've seen this before when we factored. f of x is the same thing as y. a is a number, is a co coefficient of x squared. b is a coefficient of x. c is your constant. Some examples of quadratic functions for equations are going to be x, f of x equals x squared, which is the same thing as y equals x squared. a of x equals negative 6 parentheses x plus 2, close parentheses, squared minus 4. So what you're going to notice in all of the equations is all you're looking is for x to be squared or the variable. So sometimes you're going to use an application, and here you have a different no function notation h of at t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 9.8 t plus 28. So as long as x is squared, it is a quadratic function. For quadratic functions, they have u-shaped graphs, which are the same as parabolas. So your parabola can open up or it can open down. So it can open up or it can open down. You will never see it sideways because if it's sideways, it's not a function. The domain will be the set of all the x values, and it's the independent variable. The range will be all the set of y values, and it's the dependent variable. You learned about the parent function on Tuesday, f of x equals x squared for quadratic functions. And we know that the domain is all real numbers because there are arrows at the end of your graph, so none of the x's are restricted. Here, the vertex is going to be at 0, 0 which is the highest or lowest point in your graph. And the minimum will be the y value from your vertex. So y equals zero. It is a minimum because your graph is facing up. And um, we'll learn about the axis of symmetry on Thursday. So let's look at some examples of quadratic functions and identify whether they are quadratic or not based on that information. So here we're going to identify if the equation y plus 5 equals 2x squared is quadratic. You're looking for x to be squared and a u-shaped graph, a parabola. So x is squared here, so yes, this is quadratic. Here, 5x plus 2y equals 20. x has a power of 1, so no, this is not quadratic. This is linear. This is standard form for linear. This graph is a V-shaped graph. It is not a smooth U, so no, this is not quadratic. If it was a linear function, it would be a straight line that would not be quadratic either. This graph is a U-shape facing up, so yes, this is quadratic. Now we're going to learn how to identify the vertex, max, min, value, and domain and range of the graph below. So we looked at domain and range on Tuesday. Today we're going to learn about the vertex. The vertex is going to be written as a point, and it's the highest or lowest point in your graph. Your maximum or minimum value is the y value from your vertex. So if it's a maximum, your graph is facing down. If it's a minimum, your graph is facing up. The domain will depend on your graph, um, the x values. If you, there are arrows, remember it's all real numbers. The range will come from that y value from your vertex. You identify, is your graph facing up or down? And where should are the y values? Are they greater than or are they less than that y value? So let's look at this first example. We have a graph, and we're going to walk ourselves through these questions so that we can identify all the key attributes of it. So first of all, is the graph opening up or down? Well, this graph is opening down. Now that we know this graph is opening down, we can identify when I look at this point at the top, I want to ask myself, is that going to be a maximum value or is that a minimum value? Well, if your graph is facing down, that is the maximum value. Since it's a maximum value, we need to identify what is that value. So you always know the maximum is going to be the y value from that vertex. So here, y equals 5 is the maximum. Your vertex. Your vertex is going to be a point every single time. It is the highest or lowest point in your graph. Here, the highest point in my graph is going to be at 2 comma 5. So 2 comma 5 is my vertex. 
The domain, I look at the x values, and since my graph is going on and on in both directions, there are arrows at the end of my graph, I know that my domain will be all real numbers. And my range, well, my range will depend on my vertex, that y value from your vertex. So when I go to the top of my graph, my graph is facing down, so I'm including all the values below positive five. So all the values below are less than. So range is going to be y is less than or equal to five. That five is the y value from your vertex. So look what that vertex does. It sets up your max or min value, and it also sets up your range to help you identify um, where that starting or ending point is, okay? Or value is. Let's look at another example. This graph is opening up. Since this graph is opening up, we know that we would have a minimum value here. So the minimum value, the lowest point, the no lowest number in our graph on the y's would be at negative one. So y equals negative one. And the vertex is an actual point. It's the highest or lowest point in your graph. So here, the lowest point in our graph, which is the minimum, would be at positive three, negative one. So our vertex is positive three, negative one. Your domain in this example has arrows at the end of your graph. So that means the X values are not restricted. It is all real numbers. Your range will depend on this Y value here. So when I look at the Y value, it starts at negative one here and it's going up. So all the values above are greater than or equal to. So Y is going to be greater than or equal to negative one. So notice when you have a minimum and your graph is opening up, your range will begin with Y is greater than or equal to. When you have a maximum and your graph is opening down, you will have y is less than or equal to, and it's always the y value from your vertex. You wanna make that connection with your graph. And one more example. You have a graph, and this graph is opening down. Since your graph is opening down, we know that this is a maximum. So you wanna ask yourself, what is the maximum value for the y's here? That's at zero, so your maximum is y equals zero. Your vertex in this case is the highest point in your graph. This point actually falls on the x-intercept. So this point's going to be read as two comma zero. X goes first and y goes second. So vertex is at two comma zero. And your max or min value is the y value from your vertex. Your domain in this graph, because there are arrows at the end, is all real numbers. And your range, since your graph is opening down, it's going below and all the values below zero are less than, so it should be y's less than or equal to that y value from your vertex, zero. Now you can go ahead and complete slides five, seven, and eight.